We begin today with the future of Detroit public schools. Today, Governor Snyder laying out his plan to overhaul the district. But the plan is already being met with opposition. Dozens of teachers skipping school today, holding protests in Detroit and in Lansing. And tonight we have Team 7 coverage. You'll hear from outraged parents whose kids got an unexpected day off. Those teachers calling in. But we're going to begin with Ross Jones, who went one-on-one -on -one with the governor about his plan. Ross. Good evening, Carolyn Glenda. The state has tried many times to try to fix the trouble Detroit public schools from taking over the school board to enlisting four emergency managers. None of those plans have worked, and none have been as bold as what the governor introduced today. The students deserve better. The kids of Detroit deserve better, and we need to get better outcomes. In what could be the largest overhaul in the history of Detroit schools, Governor Rick Snyder today unveiled his long-awaited plan that he says will put the district on its strongest footing in decades. It calls for splitting the district in two. On one side will be the new City of Detroit Education District, focusing solely on educating students. It would have uh, the same teachers, the same buildings, the same contracts. That would be a successor organization. But how the district is run would be very different. Snyder wants to add two new layers of oversight, the top being a seven-member Detroit Education Commission. The governor would appoint four members, the mayor appointing three of his own. The commission would oversee both traditional and charter schools, and they would hire the new Detroit Education Manager, the man or woman in charge of maintaining academic standards and closing schools that aren't performing. It would be like the air traffic controller to basically look at all schools, all forms of public schools within the city, and actually work hard on making sure we're seeing academic performance from these schools. To keep the new district debt free, Snyder would take up to $72 million from the state's school aid fund and use it to operate the new Detroit Education District. The second half of this equation is what Snyder calls old DPS, focused only on paying down the district's crippling debts, totaling $483 million. The elected school board and district's emergency manager would oversee that process, and the debt would be paid down over six years by using the tax revenue that had been used to operate the district today. For students outside of Detroit, Snyder's plan is estimated to mean a $50 reduction in school aid funding per pupil. It'll be a tough sell in Lansing and in living rooms. How can you convince lawmakers and the parents in their districts that it's okay to take money from other districts that aren't doing particularly well and give it to one that's hemorrhaging. Yeah, well, two things, three things, actually. The first one is it's school aid money going to aid schools, so it's an appropriate use of funds. Uh, the second one is, is if you look at it, um, this is not about just continuing a, a path of subsidization. This is to solve the problem. There's a legacy piece that needs to be addressed. We want to calculate where we'll be at financial stability, just like we did in the city. Again, the grand bargain money went in, not based on saying we're going to help keep you going, you know, keep giving you money while you go downhill. It was based on the assumption this money will help you get stable so you don't need to ask for more money. Now, for this plan to go forward, the governor will need to get the legislature to approve it, and that could prove to be a very tall order. If they do give it the green light, then this uh, new district could be up and running at some point in 2016. Now, speaking of 2016, the governor's name has been thrown around as a possible presidential candidate, and he has certainly not put those rumors to rest. So the question I asked him, if you are going to run for president, if you're considering running for president, how can you both do that and implement this plan? It is a question he answered, and you'll hear it tonight on 7 Action News at 6. For now, we are live outside Frederick Douglass Academy in Detroit. Ross Jones, 7 Action News. That's a good question, Ross. Thanks so much for the update. Sure, public school teachers making a bold statement on the heels of the governor's plan. As we said, dozens of teachers making their voices heard at protests at the state capitol and here in the Motor City today. And with late call-offs by so many teachers, DPS was forced to cancel classes at 18 schools today. Now, 7 Action News reporter Jane Park is live on Detroit's west side right now with what uh, happened in this part of the story. Jane? Well, Carolyn, Thurkle Elementary, where I'm standing in front of right now, was one of the nearly 20 schools that were forced to close today. Parents here were notified the night before, but other parents weren't so lucky. They didn't find out until this morning. I'm like pissed off. Excuse my French. I'm, I'm like pissed off. Louis Driscoll, among the dozens of parents to learn Thursday morning, their kids' schools were closed because too many teachers didn't show up. Hundreds of them, in fact, crossed the district, calling off to head to Lansing instead to protest Governor Snyder's sweeping plan to reform DPS. 
I think that, that they possibly could have had substitute teachers to help uh, them uh, stay in school. Parents weren't the only ones upset. DPS emergency manager Darnell Early criticized the move, saying teachers were abandoning their kids and their responsibility by letting a policy disagreement disrupt the school day. Joan Barnes stayed home to watch her great grandkids today after Thurkle Elementary told parents last night school would not be in session. But even though it threw a wrench in her plans, she sides with teachers. I was aware that the teachers were going to Lansing for the protests, and I was with, I was for that because I believe in uh, what their their rights. So how do the teachers respond to the criticism today? Well, they say if the students had to miss a day of school so the teachers could rally in Lansing and demonstrate to protect the quality of education, they say it is worth it. We're live on Detroit's West Side, Jane Park, 7 Action News. All right, thanks a lot, Jane. We want you to stay with 7 Action News and WXYZ.com for continuing coverage of the future of Detroit Public Schools.